Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking about episode 19 to season 5 of Star Wars The Clone Wars called To Catch a Jedi. Uh, first of all, I know this video is going up uh, pretty significantly after the episode aired. In fact, it's after the next episode is aired. Uh, the short version of the story is I just moved and uh, it's going to be, it's been several days since I last had internet and even after the time of this recording it's going to be a few more days before I have internet again and can repost uh, this. So uh, just so, you know, sorry, it's just the those things happen when you move. Uh, anyway, now I did say that the next episode has aired. I have not seen it yet. I wanted to do this review just um, based purely on what was in this episode, but in fact, as soon as this finishes up, I'm going to go and uh, watch, hopefully watch the next episode, the uh, only connection I have to the internet right at the moment is uh, my iPhone, which is not an ideal choice for watching uh, TV on. So we'll see if I'm fortunate enough to be able to pull that off. But anyway, let's get right into uh, episode 19. And, uh, well, the first thing that I want to talk about is, is uh, something I actually don't really want to talk about, and that is just how mind-numbingly ridiculous the uh, the Jedi Council is in being this. Now, I mean, really, they, they really should be giving Ahsoka more credit than this. Now, granted, it is established that Jedi have gone over to the side of the Separatists, have fallen to the dark side. Um, Sora Burke, if you're familiar with uh, the Expanded Universe War, very prominent Jedi, fell to the dark side during the Clone War, early days of the Clone Wars. Very, very big deal, actually, at the time. In fact, uh, more or less the same thing even happened to Mace Windu's Padawan, although it was really more of a case of her being driven insane. But, okay, anyway... But the long and short story is, yes, it is reason perfectly reasonable to think that during this time, a Jedi could, you know, join Count Dooku's side or simply start doing really evil stuff just because they'd fall into the dark side or gone crazy or whatever. But again, I really think that the Jedi Council should be giving someone like Ahsoka more credit than, uh, than they really are. Now, I guess you can also make the case that, you know, this is a sign of just how narrow-minded and rigid in their thinking the Jedi had become at this point in history, which is, of course, something that plays completely into Palpatine's hands and is a significant reason why the Jedi Order fell. But, really, even if you're making that case, it just doesn't change the fact that the, the Council is really just not, doesn't even seem to be considering the possibility that this could be a setup. And, you know, really, I mean, are they actually going to put that past Count Dooku? Especially when it's in regards to somebody who's really gone out there and really proven herself like Ahsoka has? There's also the fact that, really, she's still a pato, and she's a 16-year-old girl. You know, I remember she's, at this point in the timeline, she's supposed to be 16. So, you know, as competent as Padawans are, I mean, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi was able to kill, quote-unquote, a Sith Lord when he was, like, 19, so... But, okay, I, I think I've harped on this enough. I th like I said, the Jedi are... The Jedi Council are really being dumb about this. Now, uh, let's move on to more positive things. Now, first of all, I got an enormous kick out of the men them mentioning that this was... Part of this story was set on level 1312. Now, if you're not clear on what that means, is that this is a part of the city of Galactic City, Coruscant, that is 1,312 levels below the surface proper. I mean, remember, the entire, in the Star Wars universe, the entirety, every square inch of Coruscant is city, and it goes down and down for God only knows how many levels. And what's really awesome about this is there's an upcoming Star Wars video game called Star Wars 1313, not 1312, 1313, that is set on level 1313, uh, in uh, on Coruscant, and uh, you know, go and throw it into YouTube, and you can check out the uh, some of the preview footage they've put out there, and it looks really, really like an awesome game. If you can imagine like Uncharted set in the Star Wars universe, that's what it looks like this game is going to be. And I gotta say, 
I, I, this is one I'm really probably going to be picking up. You know, Star Wars video games uh, in recent years, like uh, Star Wars The Old Republic and The Force Unleashed, they've been pretty solid stuff. So, yeah, um, I'm, 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 I'm up for some future Star Wars gaming with that one. Now, of course, we get to see our, uh, our favorite little Padawan teamed up with Asajj Ventress, which uh, certainly is... Uh, actually extremely interesting to see these sort of two characters bounce off of each other. We haven't really seen Ahsoka and Ventress and how they relate to each other at anywhere the near the level that we have, like uh, uh, the way Ventress relates to Obi-Wan, that sort of oddly flirty relationship that she has, or uh, the very intense rivalry between her and Anakin. I mean, let's not forget that it's Asajj Ventress who gave Anakin that scar on his face. Yeah, yeah, it was him. It was Count Dooku that cut off uh, Anakin's hand. I had to stop and think about that for a second. So, but again, you know, Asa Ventress does really make that point when they're kind of bickering with each other that, uh, you know, she and Ahsoka in many ways are not so different. And it is true. I mean, uh, they are very formidable women. They're very, you know, there are people who, you know, Asajj Ventress, remember, did start off as being a rather idealistic person. It wasn't until her master was murdered that she really fell to the dark side. And we have seen that Ahsoka, you know, does have that anger, that temper within her. Now, it's it's mellowed out quite a bit over the years, but let's not forget how Ahsoka was when she was infected with the dark side on Mortis. And the way she acted, you know, that really does, if I, if I stop and think about it, remind me of the way that Ventress has acted more than once over the time that we've seen her. So, you know, Asajj is 100% right in saying that Ahsoka and she do have quite a bit more in common than even Ahsoka is willing to admit. <clears throat> now, I'm uh, not really sure exactly how d honestly interested in that pardon uh, Ventress is. You know, it would certainly make her life a little bit easier not to have to constantly worry about being arrested, but she's obviously found uh, a place of comfort in the galactic underworld, so, uh, you know, part of it I think might just be her just like, yeah, what the hell, I'll do this, it might pay off for me down the road, and if nothing else, this is interesting, so, anyway. So let's move on to uh, the big thing that's going on here, and it seems to be very heavily implied that the mysterious uh, assailant that Ahsoka battles might be her friend Barris Ophi. In fact, uh, one of my commentators actually sort of floated that idea to me, and I have to admit it hadn't really occurred to me. The idea of the, the true mastermind being Darth Maul just seemed really, really to make too much sense. Now here, I'm thinking, well, okay, maybe. I mean, the, the way the figure, the assailant moved, certainly heavily suggests a female. Uh, you know, Barris is deliberately very, well, maybe not deliberately, but is definitely noticeably vague when it comes to how she acquired some of the information that she gives Ahsoka. But, mm, I don't know, I kind of can't help but wonder if maybe this isn't a red herring. If they're not just working a little too hard to paint uh, Barris as a, as a possible traitor. And especially seeing as how this really seriously clashes with the portrayal of Barris in the Expanded Universe. Now granted, we've seen that uh, Clone Wars has absolutely no problem chucking the Expanded Universe out the, out the window if it so suits their, suits their needs. And okay, you know, that that is what it is. It's you know this show's been on the air for five years. There's really not much point in complaining about it now, right? Uh, but that said, Barris is a character I like quite a bit. I think she's a very interesting, uh, interesting Jedi. And uh, there's actually uh, two novels. Uh, I believe it was Michael Reeves who was the author of them, called Battle Surgeons, that really focused uh, quite a bit with her as the main character, and how it was really kind of like. Uh, Honestly, like, if you're familiar with the old TV show M.A.S.H., okay, well, imagine M.A.S.H. in the Star Wars universe. And uh, Barriss is a Jedi who is gifting, gifted with healing, very powerful healing abilities. And it really just sort of focused on the doctors dealing with the, the casualties in the Clone Wars and, you know, how Jedi relate to... You know, a lot of stuff like how ordinary people in Jedi relate. It was actually, um, like I said, two novels, but really, really very good stuff. 
And uh, Michael Reeves is, again, a really very talented Star Wars author, written some of my very favorite Star Wars books. So, um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about this episode is, and what's going on with Ahsoka is actually how much it reminds me of the the main the first major storyline from the Knights of the Old Republic comic books, and I'm an enormous fan of these. Um, is the the main character is this uh, young Jedi Padawan by the name of Zane Carrick, who very early in the story uh, finds himself framed for mass murder, and uh, the Jedi Council uh, also does not believe that he is innocent, and he goes on and he has one heck of an adventure. Uh, now, just to, to be clear, these are these uh, comics are set five years before the events of the first Knights of the Old Republic game, and various characters from the game pop up in secondary and supporting roles. You learn quite a bit. You basically, you during the course of the storyline, uh, spoiler, you learn the origin of Darth Malak, which is actually quite quite tragic but and uh but like i said i absolutely love these comics they've even like if you go and like read the letters pages pages of these comics you will actually find like they printed three different letters that i sent them uh, that i got so jazzed about that and ultimately yeah zane is really my absolute all-time favorite star wars character so the the whole thing of the jedi trying to uh, you know, clear themselves from murder, having to work with some people that they would never in a million years have thought that they would be willing to cooperate with in order to get the job done. Again, it, it, it's very reminiscent of that. Now, I'm not accusing the folks at uh, Clone Wars of ripping off the comics. I'm not doing that by any means. You know, there's just uh, only so many ways you can do the framed for murder storyline. And you gotta admit, the idea, okay, Jedi wrongly accused of murder on the run, even from the other Jedi, you know, that's a story that uh, you could do more than one variation on. And they are doing it very differently than how things played out in the comics. Extremely different in the comics. Uh, here, it's uh, obviously a much more condensed storyline, and uh, the uh, in the comics... The, the, the odds that Zane has to deal with are, I don't know exactly if I'd say they're more formidable, but there are certainly, the, the forces allied against him are very, very different than what Ahsoka is dealing with. Let's put it that way. So, with that said, um, again, this is really just a setup for what is really promising to be almost certainly just an absolutely epic, epic episode next time around. So, Definitely looking forward to that. I just do want to float one idea that did sort of go through my mind and is probably going to get shot all to hell by the time I watch the next episode. But if it turns out that Barris Ophi really is a red herring, I can't help but wonder if maybe Aura Singh might be uh, making another appearance. I mean, she certainly has all the skills necessary to pull off what's going on here, and she has plenty of reason to hate Ahsoka. So, you know, that's just my uh, rather silly idea that, like I said, is probably going to get shot down the minute I go down, go and uh, watch the next episode. But it was just too interesting an idea not to throw out there. Uh, well, anyway, folks, that's all I got for you this time around. So until next time, uh, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Jedi. Until next time, take care and have a good one.